uh, program evaluation site approval for the school psychology interns? Yes, Ms. Blank. What I have tonight is a request um, from one of our interns who's working with Dr. Tim Runge to conduct a research project that they would like to get certified and recognized through the um, Pennsylvania Institutional Review Board. And the name of the program is Examining the Effects of Emergency and Extended Remote Learning on Internalizing and Externalizing Symptoms Among Elementary Students. Uh, as you know, the district is supportive of the relationship we have with IUP and what they're trying to do in their work. And what we're trying to do here, this would allow permission for their team to access archival um, data, demographic data, gender, sex, teacher, race, ethnicity, special education status, no names or anything of that sort. Um, and the school psychologist intern and or school psychologist graduate assistants will de-identify the data using ID numbers. So no student names will be released. Mm -hmm. But they are looking and doing, conducting a study. They are respect, respectfully requesting access to our data. This is something that we would like to um, partner with them on, but we wanted to bring the committee first and make sure the committee was in support. And I know um, privacy is important, but we I think we have the shorts in place with regards to what we need as far as privacy. I have a copy of the letters okay. that I'll share with you and Ms. Cinda, and then um, they're awaiting our response. Okay, so the title was very um, lovely. Um, could you um, like put it in layman's terms for what they want to have accomplished or what they're seeking? Yeah, I think I think two things. One, they're looking at student achievement with regards to remote learning experiences, as well as the social emotional impact. You know, that's associated with uh, not being in school, maybe uh, some heightened increases in anxiety and, and student achievement. So they're really just trying to look at the overall uh, impact of remote learning. I think that's a wonderful thing to look into, especially now topical. Um, considering how many kids were home and not able to access remote learning or who had to learn from home. You know, the whole, um, how this impacted them psychologically. I think it's a wonderful thing to look at. If, if it's okay with you, Ms. Blank, Dr. Schaefer has raised his hand. Do you mind if we just defer to him? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Dr. Schaefer. Good evening, sir. Hi. Um, sorry, I couldn't be there. I'm covered in dirt because I've been digging a hole because I don't have gas. So, um <laughs> So that's fun, but um, I think this is uh, very wonderful. I've always been, uh, I've made multiple suggestions that I think the school should be involved in more research projects. Uh, there's a lot of data that's ripe for it. Did they say in the proposal how they were going to measure anxiety and, and different metrics like that? Did they get into specifics or? No, no, sir, not that I'm aware of. And the letter was pretty benign. Uh, they didn't go into great detail for the request. My biggest concern was the privacy. Once I knew student names were protected, I didn't delve into too much more information, but sure. I can answer and get that answer if you like. Uh, I, I'd be very interested. Um, I assume parental consent and everything will be uh, involved as well. I don't know. You wouldn't be able to do it without it, but um, yep. I, I am all for it. It sounds wonderful. Uh, I think more studies should be done. Uh, we have a student population at, with IUP right next door. We should be involved in several research projects all at the same time. I'm all for it. Okay, and I'll get that information, sir, and I'll, I'll try to get out to you. It's one of those things where they did come to me. I just put it on an agenda. I didn't really go into much in depth with them after I realized student privacy wasn't a big issue. But I, let me try to get some more clarification, but I, I appreciate the support. Thank you. All right. Um, Cinda, do you have any questions? No, I think it's a good idea. Okay. okay. Um, the progress of the PBIS student spotlight. Yep. Um, Last we heard, uh, you were still you were trying to figure out with the radio on how to get that going. Yep. As a yep. I met with the radio station, uh, Rob, Justin, and I met with them uh, maybe a month ago, three weeks ago, something along that lines. And we have plans in place that we build out a framework. Uh, Justin worked really closely with the building elementary principals. What we're to, what we're doing is dif differentiating. Right now, the middle school and high school go down there in person anyways and do radio interviews. Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue that and we're going to keep that going because that's an expectation we already have in place. What we're doing differently, though, as we discussed as through this committee, is it's going to be a reward incentive for, for some of our students at the elementary school. Um, we have the framework in place. Uh, Randy, I'm sorry, we're ready to go in April. Um, we have Ms. Amy O'Neill working with the radio station to, to coordinate the day. Mr. Travis will coordinate the transportation. The framework that we met with and discussed last Wednesday. And the only other added bonus besides the, the PBIS component uh, they're going to do a nice job trying to career uh, connect career readiness into it. So they're going to show different careers of the radio station. There's going to be some filming, oh, some wonderful. editing. So they've been really good with us to work on it. The one thing that they're going to maybe ask for us for is some help with um, 
selling ad or you know promoting it mm -hmm. um i don't have a problem bringing it back to the board and even asking us to look at an ad the one i had two non-negotiables though and this is just me and you guys can overrule me one i don't want to see an ad or don't ask me to put an ad up for anything that regards cyber school and two i don't want to see anything for beer or alcohol that's related to this program well, yeah so yeah, those, yeah, those that's are kind of some pretty non-negotiables for us but the plan is in place we're waiting to hear back from them but we are ready to start in april um they have not gotten back to us if they need any any additional sponsorships they did kick the idea around i told them once they told me a definite if they need it or not i'd bring it back to the committee and see what you want to do as a group that sounds awesome yeah. i mean i totally agree with the ads thing it's not suitable to be around kids it's not suitable to be around on the radio on the kids. yeah and i know i also won't support outside cyber either yeah, so, so that's that. Yeah, that's that's again, that's something that's not appropriate. Yeah, PA Cybers is brought to you by you know Indiana High School. Right. No, 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 I just I can't. I can't. Yeah, that was my non-negotiable. Yeah. No, I. I um, the only thing they asked me though, if I was okay with it, and I said yes on your behalf, is um, if we do it and it gets some traction, he's assuming other schools in the county will do it. And I said, I, look, it's not our program. Like we value just as much as any other school do. So. I, think uh, I have would, no problem with that, you know. I think it would be a but wonderful since we thing. Came up with the, idea, the other schools have to put up with Indiana ads during their their <laughs> segment. That's right. Oh, that'd be Come funny. to Indiana. That's right. <laughs> Indiana Ideal Plus. That's right. right. <laughs> this is Homer Center student. We're bringing so, you brought to you by Indiana School District. <laughs> but Todd Marino deserves all the credit. Him and his tech guy, I can't remember his name. I apologize, but they are very good to work with him on it. But this, I, this is kind of a silly question that it may already have been talked about. Is this going to be for the high school and junior high only? Or is this? It's all elementary only. Right. Elementary only. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Because okay, well, junior I know high. the PBIS, but I thought maybe that we were going to. Okay. Well, they already do the radio station. Um, so they go down there to do monthly interviews. So they have their incentives built into that already. Okay, so this is for the little ones. Yes, ma'am. And, and, and they're going to do a little differently. What they do at the junior high and senior high, they kind of just go into his uh, cubicle and yeah. do the interview right there this one they're going to go upstairs to a green room on the green screen and they're going to record it and they're kind of used to that at l at ben franklin and east pike or, yeah east pike because they do their announcements that way and they're going to work on um doing a couple takes that way todd's then going to take the best takes from sure. that interview and put it on sure and awesome. i think at the um for the k3s i think that we're just um, going to focus on third grade um to go to the radio station but K through three will be recognized um, as student of the month. That is awesome. But to, we just weren't quite sure about taking a kindergartner to the radio station. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they, they, they would get way we'll too distracted and, yeah, and, 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 and we'll just, we'll see yeah. how it goes, but we'll make, we might just make it special for third grade to start with. That gives them something to look forward to. Exactly. That's what we thought. Yeah. Um, I didn't put it on here, but um, have we looked any more into the newspaper and uh, Indiana Gazette with getting pictures of the kids more often in the, paper or they did start a student spotlight okay. not because of us but i saw it was in the paper the other day, just the other day. Um, i can continue to follow up with them i all my energy has been on the radio station oh yeah no no you I, can, I can only do one thing at a time yep. i mean although you know you do wear many hats i just, <laughs> I do just take say. days off once in a while that's right that's right um the uh we had talked briefly at the beginning of january about competitions and contests that we were trying to involve the community and the different schools and like a Rube Goldberg machine, see which school did the best and whatnot. Um, what do you say we start talking about that more in May? Okay. That way um, it's still on the agenda and we're not forgetting about doing it, but it gives us a chance to breathe for a couple months before we figure out a timeline and, and all those other fun stuff. Yeah, I'm fine with that. We haven't done anything. The only thing I'll say to that is, you know, not because she's in the room, but because she's in the room. Um, if we get the 21st century grant, this would be a good idea that they could do some different work in those after school clubs or different things like that. Because um, I don't know what it looks like yet. I haven't talked, I haven't even thought about it yet, but that's something we can continue. Well, I mean, I'm wondering, would this be competitions just within Indiana School District, or would you be looking for, like, say, art competitions across districts? Because we can include schools across the iu yeah. do yeah. like art or you know what i mean like different yeah yeah i mean we can't i think that way i was thinking smaller for right now just to see how we got our footing but definitely we could go further um like we could use the rube goldberg machine idea and use uh recycle renew reuse and they have to use okay and uh have the kids bring stuff in and we have somebody judge it from different school districts or different schools in the district 
and you know go from there yeah we just we, we really haven't done much with this one but it's something we can keep yeah. on our radar yeah that's i just wanted to keep it on the radar sure. to keep uh people because i really want to do the squirrel obstacle course at some point <laughs> i mean really i want to do that well I, i'll tell you what you're gonna laugh we uh this is not on agenda and i'll make it quick we had a meeting with um, a company that does I, I can't believe i told you i can't believe i'm saying this jared was there to my witness they do uh competitive gaming esports mm -hmm. and i guess it's picking up traction all throughout the country like there's all actually college scholarships ordered are yeah, offered for doing video gaming yeah doesn't that just kill you <laughs> yeah so there's so we had a meeting on thursday i invited to, um, some of our friends from the county on there and we're going to continue bringing that forward we're actually going to have them present on april 4th at the academic community and the reason i'm laughing as i tell my son all the time get off the uh, mm -hmm. get off the video games now i may say get back on i don't know um <laughs> it was a pretty neat presentation and the reason why we like it <clears throat> A lot of kids aren't athletic, and a lot of kids are looking for things who may want to be a part of something. Even if you are athletic, they may want to be a part of this. So we're going to delve a little bit deeper in this and see what this looks like as well. But that would be another thing when you talk about um, contest. Mm -hmm. You can do it internally, too. So we don't have to just compete with all the schools in, in Camber and Indiana, Blair County, or Allegheny County. We can even do things internally for some of those competitions. Right. That's the reason I bring it up. But uh, it's down the road. We're not there yet. They will present on April 4th. And make you aware of what that looks like. That, that sounds, sounds wonderful. Like. You know? um, yeah, I mean, my children right now watch more video games being played on YouTube than playing them. But my son does it. I don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm right there with you. Like, this is absolutely ridiculous. But it, it, I don't. Again, we don't have to commit to anything, but it may fit in line with what you're looking for. Yeah, I think that's wonderful. That was one of the. Uh, I think we had a computer game contest. It was one of the things in January. Yep. Um, now the web. Manager, uh, item number four, um, you had said that there was somebody you needed to hear back from and see how it goes before we go any further. Yeah, we kind of got that answer last week. Um, you know, when I had on the agenda for Greg, Mr. Lozani, to come back for three years, I think he's going to transition to enjoy his retirement. So I think now with that being out there as a possibility, I think through Ms. Senda's committee, if you're okay with it, next month we should talk about what do we want to do with athletic director and website manager. Like, I, I if the board said, look, Mike, go get a website director, I would do that. I think value in isolation with the cost associated with it wouldn't be productive. But now that maybe if we need another, if we need an AD, you know, we talked as a principal admin group, what other kind of roles can we give this person? Because I think a full-time AD would be necessary, but I think they'd have to take more work on. This could be one. Um, what I have now as a principal is doing is looking back at their respective areas, what kind of help they would need. Because Ms. Cindy can come back and say, look, Mike, maybe you need AD slash safety. That's a good one. Maybe yeah. it's AD slash web manager. Maybe it's all three. I don't know yet. So we're working on it. Mm -hmm. I would probably say let me continue to do it because that you know the main site let the buildings handle their own. But then let's further have conversations about the athletic director position, how we can morph that out. Okay. Because if I have to come back to you and ask for a full time position, I at least want it to be. Oh yeah, no, I was thinking of it being like full time. I thought it was just I was thinking of it more of like a part time basis. Um, okay. Maybe a couple hours a week. The reason I was thinking of it was because that would free up your time. Yeah. That would free up the principal's time. And I don't think that, I think your time would be better served elsewhere than to be trying to figure out how this is going yep. to get more likes and, and traffic than what you need to do. I mean, yep. so that was my thought. The next, oh, other thing, I did follow up with IEP. They're unwilling to help us at this time uh, because of some legal federal requirements they have with the area of, uh, of an intern. So that, that window that has been explored yeah um, and so we'll see where this one goes okay okay um let's see um number the psba roundtable um so how's that going yes ma'am we're on set we're all set for i believe it's uh april 8th it's that friday i, I think i don't know if it's the seventh or eighth and i apologize off the top of my head but we're all set for there representative struzzi has committed to it um senator Pittman's trying to rearrange his schedule um but if not he'll send someone from his office and uh, PSBA is also inviting other um, county officials, or I'm sorry, elected officials, because I think there's some other state reps that um, serve mm -hmm. different parts of Indiana, other than just uh, Representative Struzzi. Uh, I do have an invite out to uh, Congressman Thompson. He is checking his schedule, and I believe, don't quote me, with the redistricting, there may be another um, person um, that replaces GT mm -hmm. or who will share part of Indiana with Congressman Thompson. As I understand it, GT will have the northern half of the county. Yep. But Indiana District 
belongs to some guy in Pittsburgh now. Yeah, so we're going to reach out to him and try to connect with him as well. Okay. Uh, my, you know, I, I can imagine a lot of things are on, it's going to be on that table. Every board member has the right to submit items too to me when we build our agenda. Uh, mine's going to be cyber, right? Uh, there has to be cyber reform. As you know, Governor Wolf is trying to make his last approach now, I think, to try to get some cyber reform. That I think that has been um, not viewed upon favorably at the House or the Senate at this time, but he is making some strides or attempting to try to make some strides in that area. Uh, I think we're going to talk about some special education issues. I think we're going to talk about issues with the pandemic uh, and some funding. And, you know, yeah. you know, truth be told, the state's sitting on a pretty large uh, war chest right now. And they could provide some need, I think, to schools to help offset some of that local, mm -hmm. um, local cost. Because I'd argue that you know the schools are paying more than their fair share at the local level, and it'd right. be nice for the state to contribute at a little bit higher rate. Well, that kind of goes to the um, the question. I know the PSBA was. I sat on that committee of property tax reform, yep. and they never really got to that conclusion because of the pandemic. Yep. We were right in the middle of the heavy lifting on the discussions when the pandemic shut everything down and nobody's if if there's if they did something nobody ever contacted me from PSBA if they're still having the discussion yeah I don't think they I don't know I, I don't think they are sir I think that's a large and you were on the cyber school thing too yeah we did issue a report we got our we got our job done sir yeah we, we did we, <laughs> we did issue a report on cyber reform Nope. Um, you might also want to put on there the mental behavioral uh, assessments for the, for yeah, you know, getting mental health, yeah, yeah, mental health supports. Yep, you see that being a big trend across the country. As you know, I send you uh, articles from time to time, so that you know what we're seeing is not just isolated to Indiana. Right, it is a national trend, and I only think it's going to get worse until we provide some interventions. And you deserve a lot of credit for doing some of that. But there's more work to be done. Bridget, I don't know if you want to add to that a lot, but I think we can agree that there's been a lot of conversation about mental health here for the oh past my. Well, and I just, if I can say, you know, the PAIU, we're doing a four by four advocacy plan from now until May 24th, and we're going to have a day on the Capitol Hill. Mm -hmm. And through that, we're really targeting many of these same areas. It's, you know, mental health supports for schools, special education funding for us early on intervention funding, because it was flat funded this past year. And then the charter cyber you know, yeah. So those are our four big yep. items, which really go hand in hand yep. as well. And I think the more, you know, P groups they hear that from, the better, you know, so Definitely. they can have PAIU, PSBA. I know PASA, Matt talked about that at the last SAC meeting as well. They're, what they're going to advocate for on that end is also in, in line with this too. So that's at least three P groups that are yeah. going after it. Yep. And, and I think I, the, the big one is early intervention too. Like to me, um, I'm not going to, Kelly could probably do a better job than I can, but there's a lot of evidence-based programs out there. It's parents as teachers, nurse family partnerships. When you see it, our demographics changing as fast as they had over the last decade, it's important to provide some intervention, some supports, because, you know, even though there's no per se um, kindergarten readiness, you know, uh, requirement other than your age, um, to get them ready for kindergartens of the utmost importance, and it's more serious than ever. But a lot of families don't know or not made aware of some of these evidence-based programs offered through IUs, or the IUs are limited on how much um, spaces and seats they can offer. Right. You know. Yeah. Um, so then again, that this falls on to the locals right. to try to get them up, uh, up and ready. But early interventions, uh, it's huge. extremely. I mean, important. And it directly impacts you know our mm -hmm. school age situation. So. And it's the squeaky wheel that gets the grease. Uh, if you absolutely. don't make any noise, you're not going to be. You're not, nothing's going to be done. And, you know, and to that point, cybers were pretty squeaky for a while. They got a lot. Um, got so it's time much. for public education, I think, to step up. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. The next thing is the uh, interest groups, that the special interest groups I had, uh, the idea we had before. Um, I'm hoping that we could do it in the fall at a junior high uh, during a couple of study halls that kids might have or at the end of the day at the middle, you know, at four or five, um, because, uh, and, and that way we could get more career readiness going on. We can get more interaction with community members of the community <coughs> coming in and showing kids different things for a month. So, um, yeah, we we met Miss Blank uh, as an administration team. We also had a meeting then with the school psychs and the um, uh, school counselors. 
and we're going to come back in April and present you with some different options uh, as far as scheduling, right? Mm -hmm. It's not the bodies or staffing. We, we no. You yeah. guys, Ms. Sinta took care of that. What we need to have a hard conversation about is how we do our schedules. Like, right. you know, be prepared. We're probably going to come back and say we may want to go back to that schedule at the high school from three years ago where we had that 10th period that allowed for those clubs and activities to occur because right now we just didn't – we don't have that. We haven't mm -hmm. had that. And – you have to then aside from a school counselor saying, look, I can only serve so many kids, but what if we give time in the day for teachers to have those meaningful relationships? So we may look at how we do flex period at the junior high, mm -hmm. and we may look at that 10th period. I think Ms. Leeper brought up at one of our meetings, and I jumped all over it saying, yes, that's because that's exactly, it was kind of yeah. serendipitous because that day we talked about it, and it was brought up at night. So it's like, yes, that's what we want to do. So we're not there yet, but that's basically what we want to go back into. And I just had a meeting today with a parent whose daughter was, just going through a lot and she needs something to be someone to be around that's not just academics right and right and the one complaint not complaint the one concern we got from the counselors was look we can do so much and we'll meet so much but so can these things be done at a tier one level can we make a schedule that's more conducive for that uh, but oh by the way we got to teach everything else so we're trying to look at our schedules mm -hmm. and we're hopeful by april 4th we'll come back and bring something for at the academic committee meeting for you guys for the board to look at about how we value that and give that time. And in, in our defense, Ms. Blank, and I think Ms. Cinda, Ms. Mr. President, were on the uh, call with the PAYS data uh, folks. Mm -hmm. The data screaming that kids want that attention and that time with their staff. It's, I think, incumbent upon us now to build a schedule that's conducive to that. Right. So we're, we're working on that. Um, it's, and I realize it's not exactly policy, but at some point, Mike, we need to sit down and have a discussion at academic uh, committee probably about the PAYS data. Current programs were, we already have to address some of those issues and your recommendations on maybe some additional programming. I mean, if you've got 20% of the kids thinking about suicide, um, there, there's something, something wrong there, okay? Um, 25% of them are using uh, marijuana. So, I mean, we need to figure out what we're doing and what we else need to do to, to try to turn those curves the other way. Yep, we could do that. And I think that's going to be multiple conversations with not only our staff, our I, teachers, I, but our critical friends, too. I, I, I understand all that. And I know this is not a one and done. Yep, right. Um, but I think we do need to try to look through that lens as we start some of these other programs. I agree. Um, I, I agree. I, um, it always strikes me how much violence these kids have been exposed to, whether it's video games or, I mean, what they've, what's been graphic to them was not graphic to us when maybe when you went to school or you're all younger, but, um, you, but, <laughs> but, um, you know, and it's hard for them to filter it. I think it becomes normal after a while and social media just, you know, they, they, they They've said they're trying to addict them. They know how to do it. Yeah, and the yeah. one thing that I got that they didn't have, they don't have right now, I got a break from when I was a kid. I had okay. a bad day at school. I went home, and unless someone called me on the phone, yeah. I wasn't bothered by it. But these kids don't get any breaks anymore because of 24-7 access to a cell phone. Yeah, I mean, it's constant. Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> it's affecting everybody. But it, 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 I just wanted to think, yeah. just, just – um, to it seems to me that they have to learn – They ha we have to have serious – instruction or an advice offered about don't get hooked on it learn to take you to to, to have downtime and to collect your thoughts yeah. and build your own identity and not your identity is not part of this right. handheld chip yep. mm -hmm. two, so, thank two, you. two things to spin off of what julia just said <clears throat> at the um re-elected board member training that um <laughs> you put on for us um, that trauma was probably the most powerful, <clears throat> even though somebody else in this room was present at that. Your, your trauma present. Oh, oh, Jared. Oh, yes. Yeah, you had it on the wrong side. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, but that was, and I certainly, um, that video that you showed, and, and I know you sent it out, and I passed it on to you, mm -hmm. Mike, is something that it, you know, one of our committees, maybe we should show that or one of the board members, because that was just really very powerful. Um, 
you, you know when she when she presented. That was good. The the other thing is, and uh, Mike, I wanted to mention. Um, gosh, I can't think of her name now. Um, the, the the young lady that's my tenant that's doing the IUP research. Yes, yeah, she's presenting April fourth. Yes. So I have a tenant in one of my apartments who's getting, I think, a PhD from IUP, and her thesis was the impact of social media on self-esteem, mm -hmm. which really kind of lies at the root of kind of what we're talking about here. And apparently there are differences in the impact based on gender as well. Mm -hmm. And so she's going to put a, a short presentation on at our academic committee meeting April the 4th. 4th. Okay. Uh, and I thought it was timely based on the conversations we've been having, what you presented, um, and, and, and what we're trying to, and the pays data and everything else. I think sometimes the single biggest thing that stopped so much of the cigarette smoking was when they finally started it. So I remember there was a program my kids were telling me about it when they were that age <coughs> about showing people what happens to the lung. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it was yeah, they were, it, yeah, like they actually <laughs> it. it was like, I hate to say this, but it like yeah. scared them. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Right? I mean, it yeah. was. Unfortunately for me, it was like challenge accepted. Um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> that's how you can always was. Um, <laughs> And um, I think that if we get these interest groups off the ground, when we have like an adult mentoring like eight kids uh, for a week and they get something that really sparks their interest, I think that they're going to move to uh, drawing blueprints for the for, for a future home or uh, planning on different ideas and messing with it rather than getting on the computer or the uh, YouTube or whatever. Um, but that's that's my thought because once once you find something that you relate like to do, your you just yeah. your emotions and everything just go up. You just don't see the need for going to outside sources for. And, and I'll say and I'll shut up because I know we're out of time. So I actually had free time today. Um, so whatever junior high, I went to seventh grade class and it was fun because the seventh grade class was dissecting the student code of conduct. Oh, yes, class. and it was neat to hear them say what they wanted, but a lot of things they were saying were things that we were talking about as administrators. Like, it was kind of cool. So you'll see, I'm, we're gonna we're gonna show on April 4th, but it was neat. I'm going back tomorrow. It was just, the kids were pumped. Uh, there's this one girl, I feel so old. I said, hey, you know my mom? She said her name, I'm like, oh my God. I had her when I was a student teacher. Um, so my first year, so 22 years ago, yeah. But it was neat, it was neat to have that conversation with her. But anyways, the kids are now, uh, what's kind of cool about this is, we're building a voice with the kids too a little yeah. bit. Now we have a lot more to do. It was only one class, but it was kind of neat to hear. But I mean, now. that would be a great thing for an industry yep. is to have that, you know, it's like, it's like, yep. I think that's great. Um, okay, let's, um, the uh, Aaron IU open door, or you had put it on so that there's a link on the school district web page, I think you'd said. Is there any way for when we, uh, when Aaron is having, like, uh, on the 30th, they're having a career thing going on with IUP. Can we get a pop-up going on for them as well and incorporate, you know, so that more people see it? Yep. Well, the only thing I'd ask the IU is just send me any um, graphics that you have. I can put up right in their latest news. I can put a pop-up. I can have expire. Yeah, I can I can handle that. Um, just I need it in a JPEG or PNG file. Um, so that would be easiest for me. Yeah, I think if we have more uh, outreach pop-ups, you know, with with the IU um, Arc Summer, the Special Olympics program, um, sign up stuff. I think that would be great. Yeah, we um, yep, we'd be glad to put some of them on our on our latest news. Um, would you be okay if I didn't do a pop-up? Sometimes it just gets a little like I have it up today. I make it a little bit much for people. I can at least put on our latest news, and I could. Put it through our social media yeah. feeds. Is that okay? That's fine. That's fine. Because I, I do have links to the, those organizations <laughs> on our website. As and if you share a link and a write up with us, we can invite them in the Principal Chronicles. Yeah, and our Principal Newsletter. We do that once a month. Which uh, the, the views. I mean, my level. They've been about two thousand plus. Um, and I think that's a lot of COVID related. About, I think people are used to seeing those emails. We were about nine hundred. So. Yeah. So we're getting there. We're and you know it's starting to work. All right, and uh, the um. um Second to the last thing, uh, 
the posters and everything, how are they? They everything is ordered. Um, as as I as I discussed with you this morning, I wanted to dig a little deeper in what you meant by the online store. So I went over to um, Fast Times today. We have two options. Uh, one is we can do like a two week sale, and people can order things, and at the end of that two week, whatever we determine that that length is. Then they would print whatever's ordered. Mm -hmm. If we want to have a full time store on hand, they can do it. The only problem is the school district would have to buy the material front. Uh, and then they can, you know, run it like a store and then send us a monthly bill or not monthly bill, a monthly spreadsheet with our um, numbers, what sold, what quantity is. But I told I her I'd talk to weeks. you guys. I like the two week idea better because I think two weeks that easier. Be, it's yeah. not only easier, but you get more of a feedback on how much demand there is. Yeah. And if somebody actually really wanted it, that's when they would get it, knowing it's kind of like a special time, like Girl Scout cookies. You can only get mm -hmm. them at the end of January, beginning yeah. of February, and there's no other time. You just don't feel good get it now. The only other thing I do is like have the principals talk with their buildings. Like um, the one that comes to my head is uh, Miss Datsun. Mm -hmm. She usually does a lot of spirit sales to help generate some extra revenue. So I don't want to hurt any water step on anyone's toes. So. I got to see what that water looks like. Right. PTA but, does yeah, PTAs do. Yeah. So I got to see what that looks like. But I can, I mean, once I get that answer, I can, they can, you know, all I have to do is pick a design and what shirts in the store could be up and running within a week. But I would probably say if you're going to do it, <laughs> do it for a certain, you know, time period, not to have all that inventory on hand because that's right. money out of our pocket. Yeah, no, because you don't want to store that stuff either. You don't want to have to do with the minutia of it. Yep. Speaking as someone who's got lots of minutia in her house, yep. it never goes away all the way. So, and, and the high school has it on or has a store there, and I, I haven't had a chance to talk to them how that would help or hurt them, or maybe we could take that store and convert right. that. I don't know. I just I just started the process today. That's why I called you, mm -hmm. and then I can let me give me a little bit more time, but we can we can get something off. Yeah. Oh, okay. we've got plenty of time. Um, and the last thing that I had for on the agenda was I was hoping to get. Uh, some small groups, I know you're already starting on one um, with some local pastors, um, some subgroups that would be uh, used for support, feedback, advice uh, from uh, small groups of people who, uh, you know, like my ethnic or uh, special needs, you know, just to get together and have parents who have been through the same thing or want to have something brought to the school's attention. Um, something that might meet like once every other month or, you know, um, I just wanted to look into something and possibly doing something like that. Sure. Sure. Um, is it okay if we just think about for us this yeah, year and do just, something? Okay. Yeah. I, I figured, um, we've got a meeting in May and we've got a meeting in June th or when's the one after May? Um, I think we do one in June, nothing in July. And then we take, we then we, I think okay, so why don't we do the table that till June so okay. that you guys can have a chance to play. Sure. And uh, the non-agenda items. The only, um, thing, the only thing I have, Ms. Blank, is I, I think we owe it to our families to send a letter out. As you know, at I think Policy Personnel, we had a conversation about secretness and what the future of that looks like. I think we owe it to those families to let them know. I haven't done that yet, but mm -hmm. I'd like to get them out, get that out to them sometime this week, letting them know about the future of secretness based on their discussion last week. Okay. I think that's a wonderful idea. Um, we also, I also wanted to ask how the family night went. Um, I talked to the junior high today. They had some good numbers, about 70, 60 to 70 people show up. Yeah. Kelly had a good number. Uh, Kevin's thought his was well received. So it's something that's growing. We're not there mm -hmm. yet, but it's something that seems to be in the right direction. The more we connect with our families, the better, but it's not perfect yet. How many times a year, school year do we do those? So contractually, uh, what we have the right to do contractually is take one in-service day and put it into four quarters, four different episodes. So right mm -hmm. now we're doing four of them. One of the four, though, it counts as a um, – back to school night then the other three are kind of driven by the teams and each building decide what they want the the narrative to be or the framework for that night to be because i think it's a wonderful idea i like the presentation you guys did with the video i think if we could do that kids, more often, yeah, yeah i think it would take off completely yeah I, and we we did see increase but you know in our defense i think it was the first nice nice day of the year that night yeah, yeah. it was like 70 degrees but we did have good numbers it just wasn't it's Something that's growing. We have to get better at. All right. Well, um, does anybody have anything else? I'm, I'm good. Okay. Um, Jared, do you want to end this meeting? Close that off. We'll get the next one started. I don't think we're using the same link, right?